Hi Grade 11s, this is the first video on the exponential function. This video is just going to be an introduction to the exponential function and its formula. Right, if you look at the first formula on the page, this is the formula that we would have learnt in Grade 10. So it's no real difference in Grade 11, the only thing we're going to add is we're going to move left and right. So what should we remember from Grade 11? First of all, A is your coefficient. It is going to help us with our shape, but it's not going to dictate everything about the shape. We'll come back to that in a moment. Your b is your base. Your b is what is raised to the power of x. Now, very, very important to note is that your base has to be greater than 0. It wouldn't make sense having a negative base, because if you square a negative number, you get a positive. But then if you cube a negative number, you get a negative. So you wouldn't land up with a nice smooth function. You'd land up with a series of dots just bouncing around the x-axis. And so it only makes sense to really think of bases that are positive. And then we don't allow a base of 1 when we think of an exponential graph, because 1 to the power of anything is just 1. So it would just stay where it was. Now, very important to remember is that lots of people will get confused with a function that's written like this. What happens if it's negative 2 to the power of x? Then lots of people will think, oh gosh, but that's negative 2 to the power of x. Now be careful, there is no bracket there. So your base is not negative 2. Because there's not a bracket, it's not negative 2 raised to the power of x, it's 2 raised to the power of x. So this is the same thing as y equals negative 1 times 2 to the power of x. So just don't get confused when you get a function and you start thinking that the base is negative. Only the coefficient, which is a, can be negative. And we'll discuss what that means for the shape in a moment. Now let's remember what q does. q does the same thing that q's done for all functions so far. It is a vertical translation. So it's whether the graph moved up or down. And again, we'll discuss what that affects in a moment. So just like we did with the parabola and with the hyperbola, q is a vertical translation. So how is grade 11 going to be different to grade 10? Well, it's not going to be very different. The only thing we've added in is you can have an exponent with a minus p. And so the only additional thing is you can horizontally translate the graph. Now, the wonderful thing about an exponential graph is that if you move it left or right, nothing really happens. And so grade 11 exponentials are largely no different to grade 10. Okay, let's discuss the shape of an exponential. The shape of an exponential comes from a and b. I always think of there being two main shapes of an exponential graph. So the first main shape of an exponential graph is an increasing exponential, so one that carries on going up all the time. Now when would that occur? This would be if your base is greater than 1. So and any number greater than 1, it kind of makes sense because if you have a number, I don't know, like 2 raised to the power of x, if you did 2 squared and then 2 cubed and then 2 to the power of 4 and then 2 to the power of 5, it makes sense that the numbers just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and so that is an increasing function. Now the second shape in an exponential is a decreasing exponential and that's if the graph is going down. If the graph is going down, your base must be between 1 and 0. What this means is that basically if your base is a common fraction, um, you will get a decreasing function. Now why would that happen? Well, if you think about something like a half to the power of x. If you have a half to the power of 1, you'd have a half. If you have half to the power of 2, you'd actually have a quarter. If you have half to the power of 3, you'd actually have 1 eighth. And so your graph would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. If you had something like, I don't know, a half to the negative 1, because that's a negative exponent, if you bring the 2 to the top, it becomes positive. And so that's why a half to the negative 1 is actually bigger than in the positive region for the x's. And so that's a decreasing function. Now, I always think of those two as your basic exponential shapes. And I'm afraid you've pretty much got to know off by heart that whether your graph is going up or whether your graph is going down. Now, as you can see so far, this has all been dictated by the base. 
So your base dictates your basic shape. Okay, so what does A do? A tells you whether it got reflected or not. If A is a positive number, then nothing happened. Sorry, let me raise that. If A is a positive number, then nothing happened. Then it's a simple increasing graph or a simple decreasing graph. Nothing happened. But the moment your base is bigger than 1 and A is negative, basically if your base is bigger than 1, you have that shape. But the moment A is negative, this gets folded over the x-axis and you have a reflection over the x-axis. So it is no longer an increasing function. And it actually is a decreasing function. So basically, these two go hand in hand. The one is just a reflection over the x-axis. So I don't think of it as a new shape. I always just say to myself, has my graph been reflected or not? Now the same is going to happen on the other side. There is a fourth type of graph we could get, and that's if we took our base, which is a common fraction between 1 and 0, so it's a decreasing function. But if A is now negative, that means I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. And it's actually a function that looks like that and not that. And again, what's the relationship between these two? This is simply a reflection over the x-axis. So same type of idea. So once again, I don't think of there as four different shapes. I think of it as shape number one if the base is greater than one, or shape number two if the base is less than one but bigger than zero. And then I say to myself, okay, did A reflect it over? Right, let's look at these other um, values. What happens if a graph moves left or right? Now, this is a translation left or right, which I think I've already written down. So this is kind of pointless. This is the translation left or right. Now, the beauty of this is, so what if you translate a graph left or right if it's an exponential? If an exponential function looks like this, if you translate it left or right, nothing essential about that function changes. Not the shape, not the asymptotes, nothing. It simply means... I moved it over. So yes, my y as my y-intercept is in a different place, but nothing important about the graph changes. And so it's largely pointless. Now what isn't pointless is this plus q. Now the thing to remember is your parent function, your original function, has an asymptote. And it has a horizontal asymptote, which we should have seen on all of these graphs, because all of these graphs are tending towards your x-axis. Every single one of the graphs that I've drawn so far tends towards the x-axis. So my horizontal asymptote, it only has one asymptote, it's not like a hyperbola, is y is equal to 0 on all of these functions. So this is the original asymptote. Now, if you move a graph up or down, you will move this asymptote to y is equal to q. So exactly like in a hyperbola where the q tells you a horizontal asymptote, it's exactly the same idea here. y equals q is your horizontal asymptote in an exponential. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to learn more about the exponential through plotting the exponential function and through getting the equation from this graphs. So that will be the next two videos.